Hey everyone, Crisis here. It's pretty clear that the bulk of my audience is here for Metal Gear content, so with my knowledge of the series, I thought I would make some lore videos outlining the chronological evolution of certain mechanics or concepts of the series. This won't be a narrative analysis or anything like that, and it won't necessarily have anything to do with the power scale of the Metal Gear universe. But if you are interested in having easily digestible breakdowns of in-universe elements of the series, please enjoy. And hit that like button and leave a comment if you'd like to see more videos like these. I really appreciate the feedback. For today's video, I thought I'd take a look at the progression and implementation of cybernetics in the series, mostly in regards to enhancing the human body through technology. I'm only going to be charting the timeline of cyborgs as it relates to the main Metal Gear universe, so Metal Gear Solid 3 through Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That's not to say I won't ever look at lore elements from games such as Acid or Ghost Babel, just not for today's subject. As the Metal Gear Solid 4 database puts it, a cyborg is a human being who has been strengthened by having the internal and external functions of their body replaced with electronic devices. Cyborg parts include artificial limbs, prosthetic joints, artificial ears, artificial retinas, artificial organs, and artificial hearts. So we've got a pretty solid springboard to jump from. I'm also going to look at technology like exoskeletons, seeing as they mostly fall under this definition and their development is essential in understanding the progression of cyborgs in this universe. The first character chronologically to fit the series description of a cyborg is Zadornov from Peace Walker, taking place in 1974, who bears a bionic arm after losing his original limb during a mission for the KGB. We get a greater idea of this technology in The Phantom Pain, where Ocelot states that the first bionic arm capable of responding to the electrical signals within one's brain was developed by the Soviets in the 1960s. Zadornov's arm being advanced enough to contain a lighter within its fingers, as well as being able to fire the hand as a means of assassination. The exact origin of these bionic arms can be found within The Phantom Pain. The Diamond Dog staff member known as Spying Harrier was an expert in the field of bionics and had designed many prosthetic limbs, perhaps even Zadornov's, during his employment under the Kremlin. This engineer then defected from the Soviet Union after feeling that his research was going to waste on weapons development. Some time in the nine years between the fall of Out of Order and the awakening of Venom Snake, Ocelot had been able to procure one of these prosthetic limbs to the aid of Ahab. This limb undergoing some modifications during the boat ride from Cyprus to Afghanistan. After rescuing the aforementioned bionics expert from his Soviet captors, he would continue to research and improve upon his prosthesis technology to the ends of better equipping Venom Snake. These improvements would include echolocation-based sonar to locate nearby life forms, increased running speed, and faster reload times for Big Boss's Phantom, as well as more extravagant features like Zdornov's Rocket Punch with non-lethal and lethal explosive variant, the electric stun arm, and the enemy teleporting hand of Jehudi. We as well know that other bionic limbs besides arms exist, seeing as Ocelot suggested a bionic leg to cause Miller. Around this same time, in 1984, Huey Emmerich bore externally powered legs in an attempt to practically cure him of his paraplegia, a culmination of his wish fulfillment made vocal 10 years prior. These legs being based on a failed attempt by the US to develop a cybernetic exoskeleton, a project which the Patriots would continue to work towards in the coming decades. In contrast with Harrier's bionic arm, which ran on a combination of solar energy as well as the kinetic energy of the user, these legs required an external power source to function. They were also modified with metallic archaea, improving the reaction speed of the legs' actuators, as well as providing a lock and release function to the exoskeleton's joints. This model of exoskeleton would be lost to sea upon Huey Emmerich's banishment from the private military company known as Diamond Dogs.
Now, before we learn that the top soldier in Big Boss's original army nation was the final boss of the original Metal Gear, there was another explanation given as to how Big Boss could return in Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. That explanation being that, after his death at the hands of Solid Snake in Outer Heaven, the father of modern robotics, Dr. Petrovich Madnar, revived Big Boss via The Snatcher Project, a reference to Kojima's previous game. This operation, presumably restoring his arms, legs, right eye, and right ear with cybernetic replacements, increasing Big Boss's physical strength past Solid Snake's thus garnered techniques. Now, in Metal Gear 2 itself, this idea is only presented as a possible rumor. While the Metal Gear Solid 4 database does convey this as fact, it was clearly retconned by Metal Gear Solid 5's ending. Although, in my opinion, it is entirely possible that Madnar would be capable of this operation, seeing as he did design both the ultimate weapon, Metal Gear TX-55, as well as the cyberoid, Bloody Brad, both being driven by artificial intelligence. But Regardless, this is only a potential entry in the history of cybernetic enhancements in Metal Gear. After Gray Fox was crippled by a landmine in a battle against Solid Snake, his body was recovered by the Patriots, who would use him as a test subject in their latest attempt to develop an enhanced exoskeleton. In 1999, they would transplant these cyborg body parts onto Frank Yeager. This operation was led by Dr. Clark, formerly known as Paramedic. Now, I'm hesitant to give her the credit for designing the actual exoskeleton used in this procedure, as it's made clear that through the 60s and into the 80s that Dr. Clark was an expert physician, being on the cutting edge of such subjects as cloning or the manipulation of the human genome, not mechanical engineering. Which leads me to think that her hand in the creation of the cyborg ninja was strictly grafting the bionic limbs and chassis onto Gray Fox manipulating his genome, and administering the painkillers and such that would be necessary in a procedure as intense as this. So who knows if there was an Emric or a Madnar behind the scenes who actually invented this breakthrough iteration of exoskeleton technology. Whoever's responsible, exoskeletons have sure come a long way since Huey's legs. The design featured with Gray Fox would combine bionic limbs seamlessly with full body armor, granting overall improved power and durability, a far cry from the bulky designs featured in exoskeletons from decades prior. It as well functioned respectively from any external power source, and was as well outfitted with stealth camouflage. Gray Fox's chassis would as well be equipped with a hand-mounted laser cannon, as well as a Super Sentai-esque helmet with advanced HUD. The MGS4 database describes exoskeletons of this type as being able to increase human strength by several times by using the power of electric actuators, artificial muscles, and compressed air. The Metal Gear Solid 1 manual offers some interesting insight, perhaps into why the exact same technology was titled a failure 20 years ago. To quote, Physical and mental problems, which had hitherto prevented advances in this technology, such as stress, concentration, and rejection reactions, were overcome through the process of gene therapy. So essentially, it might have only been possible to achieve these superhuman results through the process of genetic manipulation, of which Fox also served as a test subject. This is interesting to consider, that only a certain genetic code could provide compatible with such extensive cybernetic operation, at least at this stage in the technology's evolution. It seems that Gray Fox would embody the culmination of not only cybernetic, but also genomic advancements. However, even with these enhancements having taken place since the 80s, there were still major hiccups regarding this iteration of exoskeletal technology, primarily the potentially faulty connections between the human nervous system and the bionic limbs nerve receptors, which, if at fault, would inflict intense pain upon the wearer. After Frank Yeager's sacrifice and the complete destruction of his exoskeleton, the Patriots would continue the development of enhancement through cybernetics. Olga Gerlukovich, acting as the proxy of Gray Fox in the Solid Snake simulation, wore a redesigned version of Gray Fox's cyborg body. This model was simply worn by the user rather than needing to have cybernetics grafted onto the wearer's body. 
It's the difference between Iron Man and Mecha Frieza. This circumventing the chances of failed nerve connections until the necessary advancements could be made in the area. Overall, this exoskeleton seems to be mostly identical to Fox's, besides lacking the laser cannon and with the mask potentially being holographic. This period would as well begin to blur the line between exoskeleton and sneaking suit, as it is stated that Raiden's skull suit was outfitted with an exoskeleton. For the purposes of this video though, I'll only be looking at sneaking suits in the context of exoskeletons and features associated with those, such as enhanced strength and mobility. So I won't be listing things like noise-proof soles as a feature or anything like that. The evolution of sneaking suits could surely warrant its own video. Regardless, the true quantum leap in exoskeletal technology would be Solidus's powered suit, a state-of-the-art exoskeleton employing damage-reflexing muscle fibers to nullify any kinetic energy taken upon the suit, being stated to even be able to withstand strikes from high-frequency swords. It can as well expand these muscle fibers to increase the wearer's raw physical strength. Furthermore, it features the Snake Arms, two Doc Ock-style mechanical arms which can fire missiles as well as inject mind-bending drugs into an opponent. This armor did, however, possess an Achilles heel, or rather tendon, as the document of MGS2 puts it, its spine, a weakness Raiden exploits to great effect. The enhanced mobility and damage dispersal technology present in Solidus's powered suit, the Metal Gear Rays, and the Patriot Design Skull suit would lead Otacon to refer to these creations as Brothers. The elite guard of the Arsenal Gear, named the Tengu Unit, were as well equipped with armored exoskeletons, boasting the same improvements to their agility and endurance. <laughs> At this point in the timeline, we see that these kinds of high-tech exosuits seem to almost outnumber standard fatigues on the battlefield. Solid Snake himself was equipped with the Octo Camo sneaking suit, based on designs borrowed from DARPA. This sneaking suit would surely be outfitted with damage nullifying properties inherited from the Skull suit, as well as an amplification of muscle power evocative of Solidus's powered suit. Laughing Octopus also possessed a derivative of the Octocamo technology, as well as an advanced form of Solidus's snake arm combat suit. The Haven Troopers were as well equipped with top-of-the-line powered suits, sharing the damage-negating effects of Solidus's exoskeleton, further granting them an increased jumping ability, earning them the nickname Frogs, as well as the ability to cling to surfaces and an application of Van der Waals force, which I'll let Otacon explain. It's a type of mutual interaction that occurs between two electrically neutral particles. Geckos use it to crawl up walls and across ceilings. It's also implied by this codec that Vamp as well is armed with a portion of this powered suit technology. Another example of a type of exosuit are the power suit soldiers seen towards the end of Old Snake's mission in South America. These powered suits were developed by Arms Tech and provided greatly increased lifting strength, making them useful for transporting heavy equipment great distances, and as well as wielding such heavy artillery as multi-barrel machine guns and missile launchers. It's also worth mentioning that Liquid Ocelot rocked the cyborg arm in this era, kind of coming full circle from his days in Diamond Dogs. Between this and the cigars, maybe Ocelot was paying tribute to both big bosses the whole time. Of course, all of this pales in comparison next to the ultimate cyborg ninja of the franchise, Raiden. After being captured by the Patriots, Raiden was subjected to the system's latest iteration of the Perfect Soldier program, first experienced by Frank Yeager some 40 years prior. His body was almost completely replaced with bionic body parts, all but his head from the lower jaw up and his spinal cord. It featured the same compressed air system as Gray Fox's cyborg body, allowing the expansion of his cyborg muscles, as well as being equipped with polymer muscle fibers, granting him enhanced strength, speed, and agility. His chassis was as well equipped with something resembling Old Snake's solid eye, as well as the ability to summon lightning. I'm not too sure about this being a feature of this cyborg body or some kind of mythological reference. With this series, it could literally go either way or both. But regardless, 
Coursing throughout Raiden's new body was white blood, which, while granting him an enhanced rate of stamina increase, it would provide a setback in the event of extensive blood loss, and would require a dialysis machine to circumvent Raiden's own blood from poisoning him via autotoxemia. This body would as well likely run off rechargeable electric batteries, the standard for this generation of Cyborg, and was further equipped with an artificial voice box with which Raiden could relay audible messages seemingly without the use of his lungs or diaphragm. Screaming Mantis of the Beauty and Beast unit is as well equipped with a protective suit, possibly a powered suit, stated to provide greater protection than even bomb blast suits, which are exactly what they sound like. At this point, we're officially off the rails. Everyone and their mothers are either equipped with an exoskeleton or are fully fledged cyborgs with all but their brains replaced. This era is, so far, the peak in the evolution of cyborg technology in this universe. After the fall of the Patriots, much of their classified intelligence was made available to the public. This led to their studies into the fields of cybernetics being adopted by the world's civilian and military sectors. As far as the evolution of the technology when applied to combat, we have the ability to orally digest nutrients, oral and olfactory senses, which can be activated and deactivated at will, the suppression of pain receptors, rechargeable electrolyte fuel cells as a power source, although Raiden could function in a lesser mean if his fuel cells had run dry. Cyborgs of this era can as well essentially shut down after sustaining substantial injuries, with them containing a sufficient amount of liquid oxygen within their blood to allow them to survive this hibernation period. They can as well survive pretty much anything, like decapitation, as long as their brains remain intact. They can withhold from breathing for a period of time, with certain members of the Winds of Destruction surviving as an aphysical consciousness for a brief period after their bodies were destroyed. They were made up of carbon nanotube muscle fibers, an improvement from the polymer muscle fibers of the last generation, as well as infrared sensors being standard perception enhancements. These evolutions would be personified through Raiden, who after being outclassed in a body that had already made his MGS-4 self obsolete, underwent an utter reconstruction by the hands of Wilhelm Vought, a transhumanist with his roots in the development of bipedal weapons and magnetostrictive actuators. It's also stated that he revolutionized the world of myoelectric prosthesis, whereas before, prosthetic arms were essentially non-functional. We don't really get a time frame for this, but considering Doc's age and Ocelot's statement about the earlier developments of bionic arms, I, I don't know, maybe a 15-year-old doctor and spying Harrier were lab partners, who knows? Or what if these two are one and the same? It's also stated that Doc Tor supplied MGS-4 era PMCs with partial cyberization. Maybe we have him to thank for both Venom Snakes and Liquid Ocelot cyborg arms. Or maybe it's a retcon, who knows? Raiden's body, made up of the most cutting edge of cybernetic equipment, would possess the ability to absorb nanopaste through contact to heal his wounds. Raiden as well had enhanced visual senses through his bandana-style eye patch, which, in all actuality, was an artificial compound eye unit. Essentially, think of it as an evolution of the solid eye. It allows for binocular vision as well as an augment mode, which combines soliton, night vision, and thermal vision data uploading it directly into one's optic nerve to greatly improve the cyborg's situational awareness. In terms of the civilian population at this time, most people took advantage of cybernetics in the case of bodily harm, i.e. the loss of a limb or damage to their senses. In extreme cases where the body was either so damaged or racked with illness, or some bigwig trying to transcend us 99 percenters, the average civilian would be given a body deemed last gen in relation to military cyborgs. They could, as well, be equipped with organic muscle fibers, which would require the white blood and dialysis system seen in Metal Gear Solid 4. And some others could have bodies composed of cultivated muscle tissue, with only their bone structure being made of heat and corrosion-resistant materials. For the majority of situations, the myoelectric prosthesis created all the way back in 1960s Soviet Russia would still suffice.
and we've reached the furthest point in the Metal Gear timeline, from bionic arms in the 1960s to clunky exoskeletons to cyborg ninjas. Let me know in the comments if you guys have learned anything, or if you want to see more lore videos regarding the Metal Gear Solid series in the comments below. Of course, feel free to subscribe, I appreciate the support. With that said, I'll see you guys next time.